highlighting these uh, hidden stories or stories that are have that are not necessarily in official narratives. So stories of um, you know, the the head tax, right? Or even before that, with the um, building of the railway or the the gold rush and how the early you know first wave of Chinese immigrants came and and then later on with the you know, the building of the CPR um, that so many Chinese were, were recruit, laborers were recruited yet um, you know, they were considered cheap labor. Chinese was very poor so they cannot make a good living in their own country land so that's why they have to go overseas to look for a better uh, living. I think there's a danger sometimes of um, seeing Chinatown or the community as, you know, a relic, something that needs to be preserved. That's right, yeah. Like, it's not. It's a living, we're a living organism. Like Chinatown's a living organism. We're a living community, you know, living and breathing. And I think that, that we also need to also let people know that it's not just, you know, something stuck in history. Yeah. It's a place for all Chinese to come together. We are a very uh, close-knit family, so uh, to take that away from us is like it's like losing our heritage. They talk about the Chinatown, very important. So we have to unite it because every weekend, most of the Chinese people come to see the friend, especially the seniors live around here. The shopping grocery easily save the Chinatown to tell most of the people how important they are. This is a heritage also and the tourist area. Chinese people always unite together. The hope in the future will be exist Chinatown. On January 24, 2022 this year, our National Assembly and our City of Montreal Mayor, Valley Pratt, have announced our Montreal Chinatown granted heritage status. It is the only beginning. One step away, we will have our Chinatown back to the way that we always wanted it. <laughs>